Hey yo everybody, this is another installment of Finding Sensibility where we take positive or inspirational quotes to see if we can make them work in our day to day or if they might just be a product of the times. And today's quote comes from Simone Weil and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. All sins are attempts to fill voids. So this is a really fascinating idea and I, I think we'll be able to explore some interesting topics with it. Uh, first off, I don't think it's entirely accurate. Um, I, I think it's, uh, again, a very interesting idea, but it's not completely accurate. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is look at the term sin. Uh, most of us that immediately jumps to more of a Christian connotation and ideology and essentially is uh, breaking the rules of God uh, it, to, to sum it up quickly and oversimplify it drastically. It also just kind of amounts to the, the bad things that we do. And so it, more in that context, I, I think <clears throat> I'm going to try to, to reevaluate the definition by, we fin by the time we finish this talk. And so when, when we're talking about all sins simply being a method to fill the void, uh, I, I, a lot of the time violence, I don't really think, applies to that sense, violence against others. Um, in, in some senses, more more in a rage, like road rage or uh, fits of passion, something like that. That's usually I don't consider that to be filling a void. It's it's overflowing. It's emotion overflowing that just drives somebody crazy past the point of breaking. Um, and you could debate that idea all day, but we're gonna move on. What I consider this to mean more is a sin is something that takes away from your essence or your humanity. And so that kind of puts these things in a different context, puts these ideas of, of what a sin filling the void is. Immediately, you can go to things like drugs, you can go to things like alcohol, sex, um, uh, child or spouse abuse, all of these different kinds of things that are, are the big ones, those are the easy ones to go after. But they're not all that terribly common. Not everyone is an alcoholic. Not everyone is reliant on drugs. Not everyone verbally or physically abuses their significant other or their children, things of that nature. So what we have to do is actually examine what our void is and what we do to try to fill it. For me, a lot of the time, it's video games or television. Uh, I could sit and binge watch TV all day and if I wake up in the morning and the first thing I do is turn the TV on it's pretty much a wrap on my entire day nothing productive is gonna happen that day I don't develop any skills I don't hone any skills I don't contribute to the people around me I waste the day I truly waste the day and that's what I consider to be sinful in this context, is there is no reason the age we live in that I cannot have something, anything accomplished by the end of the day. And some people may try to validate that by saying, well, I beat a video game, I made it further in the level, Okay, but that's a false reality. Same with television. I, I memorize the lines to my favorite show. Again, that doesn't actually contribute anything unless you're 
putting together a performance piece in some way. So, recognizing what your void is and how you fill it are the main things. What I have tried to do, instead of playing video games and instead of just turning into a zombie in front of the television, this is what I do. I try to fill my time at least producing something. And if nobody gets anything out of it, I am exploring ideas. I'm using my mind in a way that is at least engaging. I'm at least trying. Even if it doesn't amount to anything, I'm trying. And that effort, that's virtue, which to me is the opposite of sin. So, think about that. Try to have some idea of what your personal void is and what you try to fill it with. And if it's drugs and alcohol and self-harm or harm to others, anything like that, obviously, please, please, seek help. Uh, those, those are levels of self-destruction that at some point you're not going to be able to come back from. If I play a video game all day long, worst thing that's going to happen is I'm going to be really hungry by the time I get to the end of my day. And I'm going to be pretty cranky. So, once you recognize what those things are, then they can be less harmful to you. I honestly don't remember where I heard it, but it's something I've really tried to hold myself to. But the only time one of your weaknesses can be damaging to you is when you're unaware that you even have it. So, if you have an awareness of what this impulse is that makes you do this thing that may take away from your essence or your virtue or cause you to be self-destructive or destructive to others, that's when it's harmful. But if you have this thing, you can say, all right, I'm just really bored, or I'm really lonely, or I'm really sad, or I'm really angry, and I want to do this thing so I won't feel this way anymore, but this is the hundredth time I've done it, and I still feel this way. i got to try something new. Or I just got to not do it. i got to recognize that it's not going to benefit me. That's when you still have this weakness, it's still a part of you, but it's not harming you, it's not bringing you down. So recognize, recognize what it is, and try to work within it as best you can. And if you need help, reach out to anybody, because it's something we all go through. And hopefully we can all help each other. Until next time, stay tuned and stay real.